Thank you for watching Conscious Consumer Network. The live stream broadcast is free to view. You can pause and rewind live broadcasts to catch up. Or view shows at a later date by accessing our free archives of all shows. Check out our broadcast guide to see what's on. You can show your support by donating to our network support fund. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter or subscribe to the monthly newsletter for updates. We thank you for supporting free and independent media. is adultism. Adultism is really all the behaviors and actions that come from this belief that adults are better than children and thus we have the right to act upon children without their consent. And that is embedded in our experiences in our culture. We grow up within a system of adultism and so we inherit those beliefs often without thinking subconsciously and when we become parents it becomes the way in which we operate. We operate from that belief system. And so unlearning adultism, to liberate ourselves from adultism so that we can create um, relationships with children that are based on trust, mutual respect, and empowerment, we really have to go through a systematic transformative learning process. Hi, I'm Arthur. Hi, I'm Liz. Hi, I'm Martin. Hi, I'm Will. And we're going to be talking about adultism. Uh, do any of you guys feel like you want to specifically talk about what the definition of adultism is? Well, adultism, oh, well, first of all, this is Youth on Subjects of the World. Just want to put that out there in case you didn't know. And uh, adultism is the act of discrimination from adults to children or really feeling adults feeling they have power over children just because of age. I think it's also called ageism somewhere. Yeah, I think I've definitely mostly used the term ageism when I talk about this. But that can also be in reverse, where uh, children would discriminate against adults or have certain beliefs about adults. Yeah, it's a more broad term. Yeah. Um, I haven't really experienced it that much. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's something that I've never really experienced, and I don't think a lot of people here have really experienced. And if you have, go ahead, say something about it. But I think it's something that is, it needs to be talked about, and it doesn't get talked about a lot. Not a lot of people go into this subject because no one really notices it, and if they don't notice, no one really thinks it's wrong because it's not, it's not like something people focus on as being the big thing wrong with the world right now. And it's not the biggest thing wrong with the world right now, but it's still, it's important. And I feel like it needs more awareness and that there needs to be something done about it. Yeah, I can, I can talk on that. Cause I, I've actually had a lot of experience with uh, just adults treating me differently because I was a child. Um, when I was a kid, I was in school until second grade and the teachers definitely like looked down on me and did not treat any, like any of the kids, like, like, people and when I was a teenager I just I hung out with a lot of adults and there was definitely that dissonance and it felt very weird and especially when I went out of my like friend circle to like different adults I like constantly felt like looked down on and uh, I, th I think what I have plenty of examples of just times where like I'm trying to have a serious discussion people are just like oh that's look at him I'm trying to have a serious discussion I'm like no I'm just a person trying to talk to you 
And uh, one thing I found is that doesn't stop when you turn 18 because what, what once you when you're a teenager, people in their 20s look down on you because you're younger than them. But once you're in your 20s, people in their 30s look down on you because you're younger than them. So it just it's a constant cycle. Uh, have experienced um, that too. I feel like there's a lot of just basically everyone. If you're older, that means you're better. If you like, it's very interesting because there's no reason for it. You could, you might know more things, might depending, like you've been in the world longer, but that doesn't mean you're automatically better and that talking to someone younger than you is beneath you. I think the biggest experience I've ever had is I grow up in a family in a place where I can talk to a lot of people and I talk to adults like they're kids I guess like they're people and I guess I've kind of come to expect the same thing from me and whenever I talk to other adults that are not really in the same like circle it's kind of awkward like they don't really care what you're saying they don't necessarily they're not really rude to you but they just don't they're not really listening they don't really want to, to be discussing anything with you um well sort of being the middle child in the family though having no siblings uh, it's kind of been weird because i've always been expected to um take care of the little ones the little littler kids but also um I'm also always expected to um, be act my age and stuff like that. But uh, could also, could you specify what you mean by uh, you're the middle child, but you have no siblings? Well, there's no one really in my age group in my family. There's like there's like the eight to nine year olds. There's me, and then there's the 18 to 17 year olds so it's <laughs> yeah but also like when I talk to my other family like not my other family but when I talk to other family it's like no matter what I say it doesn't sound right because it you know, it, it feels like whatever I say is sort of looked down upon and kind of thought untrue because of my age Um, I hang out with a lot of like adults when I work at the barn um, and they kind of take care of me but as close as I am with them I feel like they definitely look down on me every time we have a conversation they always change it over to school like you're never going to learn anything if you never go to school or even if we're having a very um, interesting conversation about horses and what I plan to do with my life they always bring it back to school and how I should focus on that and it just I had that a lot a lot <laughs> um yeah I don't really know <laughs> I'm not good at talking sorry yeah I've definitely had a lot of experience of like it's more like different people on based on different ages have different amount of like conversational intelligence I would say like I've like I've talked to people my age that like when I talk to them it, it feels like talking to a 12 year old kind of like the stereotype of how a 12 year old would be talking but I've talked to people who are nine who seem more intelligent than I am or especially like knowledge like knowledge is so subjective um and like there's a lot of things I know like way too much about that people in their 90s don't know anything about. Like, I think technology is actually a good example of that, where I think a lot of young people uh, are more knowledgeable and more skilled with a lot of new technology versus people who are older and have more experience, but not necessarily with that thing. So it's an example of, like, like I think there's a meme on the Internet of, like, grandparents going to their grandchildren for advice on computers. So I think that shows that knowledge is very subjective. The thing that bothers me the most with adult children conversations is they don't really want to hear your opinion on things. Like, 
oh, you're a child, so you can't be informed on political matters or things that are going on in the world or something they heard on the news. Like, if you're younger, that means you must not know anything about these and your opinion is misinformed and you only know it because you read something on the internet and looked at it for five minutes. Like, that one bothers me the most because I've actually spent eight hours in one day just researching things and I just want to talk to people and I find people who know about those other things and w would be interesting to have a conversation with and I could learn something and maybe they could learn something but they don't even give that a chance because I'm a kid I have kind of long hair and they don't think I know anything so they don't give me the time of the day yeah like the um the saying you'll understand when you're older or you'll think differently when you're older like a lot of times we're just like no I feel like this is just how I think and you're blaming the way I think on my age and I've, I, I think I used to write these things down and be like okay when I'm this age I'll like be, come back to them like hey I still agree with this opinion and I think it, it is a way of just brushing off your opinion like your opinion doesn't matter because you're young obviously you're going to change it when you're older like maybe we won't maybe we this is just our opinion you should take it seriously agreed So I think, oh, Will, you were trying to say something? Okay. I just wanted to say, Martin, that what you said was really well put, and I totally agreed with that. I think, I think more people need to be aware that it's happening. Because I think not a lot of people mean to. And I want to, I want to, express this a lot. I don't think a lot of adults really understand that they're doing anything wrong. And that's why it's great to have this kind of podcast. They don't really, I don't think they think about the fact that they might, that they're discriminating or that they're completely judging us just because of our age. I think they just think, this is what I was told when I was young, so this is what I have to say now, and that's just how it goes. And I think that needs to be put out there that it's not like that, that it doesn't have to be how it was when you were younger, because if everything was how it was when this person was younger, this person was younger, the world would be the same forever, and no one wants the same thing forever. Couldn't agree more. So, anyone have like, a specific time that someone has judged you by your age or anything like that? I can't think of anything when I was really young, but I, I run into a lot of, um, I look way older than I am. I'm 20 years old, but I, most people like, if they guess, they think I'm like 25, 28 kind of thing. And uh, I've noticed a pattern of when people find out my age, their voice gets really pitched and they're like, oh my God, you're a baby. And it's like, it's like really demeaning, like, I, and they, I know they don't mean to, and I like honestly believe they don't, but it just like, it makes me feel like, like, oh, you don't think of me as like an equal anymore. And I don't think they actually even feel that way, but it definitely, it's like very low key in the scale of like the worst things you can do. But when you just like get it a lot, it starts to like build up and you're like, this happens a lot. And I think people should realize that like, people are different ages like just the fact that you see me differently now based on just because of my age like I'm still the same person and I think that's the biggest problem is that you've got to look at the person and not like their age but uh do you guys have any like like early child examples when I was uh, I think I think I might have been seven or so I was talking to my friend about a certain subject and I went to talk to like the adult about the subject and they basically told me to go away we're ha like we're having an adults conversation because I realized both things we were talking about were fairly similar and maybe the people over there might have something like new to say on the subject and I just remember feeling like because at that point, I didn't really know what was going on. I just thought they were being mean for no reason. 
And as I got older, I slowly started to see there, hey, it wasn't just uh, those people, it was most people do that. And it's, it's not fun. <laughs> like now, I'm, I'm 14, but I'm almost six feet tall. So a lot of people think I'm older than I actually am. And they'll have the same thing. They'll have conversations with me. And then I'll tell them my actual age. And they'll be like, oh, my gosh, you're so young. And then, like, it doesn't necessarily, they don't necessarily treat you that differently after knowing your age. But it just feels very, it, it hurts to, like, have that be singled out for really no reason. I think uh, two po topics I find very interesting with regards to this is specifically like governmental uh, adultism with specifically like the age of uh, you can be, be in the army or uh, the age of alcohol drinking. Like, for example, in any other country, it's usually like the lowest is 18. But in America, the age you can drink alcohol is 21 and you can serve alcohol and you can fight in wars, but you can't drink alcohol. Um, or, or even fight in wars. You have to, uh, why can a 16-year-old not fight in a war, but an 18-year-old can? Um, and it's sort of like I understand the thought process of they want someone, like you're, you are still growing, and you, they don't want me, you to make such a big decision before you're ready for it. But um, actually, an even better example is voting, because while I, I think you should, you should finish growing before you drink alcohol, Although personally, just don't do it at all, in in my opinion. But like voting, like I definitely know, like I legally can vote, and I know a lot of people under eighteen who are who I would like literally give my ability to vote for. Like you, people are who are way more informed, and I'd be like, you guys should vote. Um, I I don't think anyone else here is over eighteen. What do you all feel about not being able to vote, but properly being like? caring a lot about the current situation of the government. Um, honestly, not being able to vote, it annoys me a bit. And I understand the reason why kids don't have a fully developed frontal lobe. But if you... And I understand why they probably don't want to, because there's a lot of uninformed people, and there's going to be a lot more uninformed kids. But honestly, I think if, if kids don't take the time to be informed, then why would they take the time to actually vote? Or at least most of them, I don't think, even if they had the chance to, wouldn't vote. Unless their parents drag them along. I think voting is one of those things that each person is different. It shouldn't be an age thing. Now, I'm not suggesting we should completely reinvent the way we handle voting. Voting in general doesn't always work. It usually doesn't work, actually. But voting, it should be, there should be like a test or something to like, because there's a lot of people that are under the age of 18 who have really well-informed opinions on this and can actually make a well-informed decision when voting. And there's a lot of people over 18 who don't know anything about it and are just going to vote for whoever they like based on misinformed facts, not facts, misinformed information, or just things that they think are true but aren't. Alternative facts. <laughs> yeah, I want. I want. Trying to like steer clear of that because I don't want to get all political. But yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I, I think. I think the problem with making a test is I, I thought of that example too. But they they used to actually have that um, with um, if if black people wanted to vote, they would have to take a test, and there was a lot of like struggles of just not only getting into like not only completing the test and passing it, but even getting into the building. It's like 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 a even worse version of our perception of the DMV where like, oh you you need these three IDs and it's like, but I don't have those and to get that other one you need another thing. And it's just a bunch of like craziness to stop them from getting it. So like that would open the door 
to not only stop children from actually getting it, but other marginalized groups um, from like passing the test. True, true. See, that's it's frustrating when you're trying to think of a way to solve a situation and you kind of realize, hey, maybe this is the best way. And that kind of sucks because there's not a lot of other, it's still not great. Because I've been thinking about it for a while and various problems of how to solve them or make them or make things better than they are now. And it's not easy to think of that. Like you think, oh yeah, I can just kind of save the world with my brain, just kind of think about it for a little while. And then you realize, oh, no, there's a reason no one's like changed this or proposed changing this before because there's there's just certain things that are, it's hard to figure out a good way to do them. Yeah, although there's there's not really a good reason why our voting system hasn't changed, and that should be an entirely other episode of this. But like that should definitely that's something I definitely believe that there's no real good reason why we haven't changed. What do you think, Melissa? Liz. Um, I don't know. I think it would be great if younger kids could vote. I mean, I definitely have. Uh, things I'd like to say about the election this year, but I, some of my older friends were telling me how they just voted for whoever came to mind. They didn't even put any thought into it, and that really bothered me. They just didn't care. And, yeah. Honestly, if I were able to make the voting age to change the voting age, I mean, um, I would probably change it to from 12 to, it would be either be 12 or 13. Because that, at that point, you have at least enough frontal lobe to get informed, at least, and be able to make rational decisions. Also, there, a lot of people's argument for, well, kids aren't informed enough to know well, if, you're, if they're not allowed to vote, not a lot of people will see the reason to learn all this stuff if they, it doesn't matter. Like, if they can learn all these things and they can't actually put it to good use by voting, well, what they think is the only way to put your knowledge to good use. A lot of people just aren't going to spend the time to do that, only to be told, oh, you'll, you'll change your opinion when you're older or you can't vote until you're this age and so don't worry about it kind of thing yeah i think i think young people have a lot of optimism towards voting which is why uh young people have like the highest voter turnout because uh i think i think what you said is correct of uh people just voting for whoever they thought of because like people get kind of uh overwhelmed with the voting every year and eventually they stop caring but young people like really do their research and investigate. And like, I mean, the fact of a fully developed frontal lobe is true, but I think there's a lot of adults who have complete, like, like no rational thoughts whatsoever. Um, and I think there, and I, I think we can see in, in many examples in many past elections of just not a lot of rational thought happening. So I think, I think saying that like children don't have ra or can't have rational thought and adults definitely can, um, and therefore that's why we have the uh, voting age would be a bad thing to say. Uh, on an unrelated topic, I think there's a lot of adultism on the internet, like in the way you see people sort of, um, what's it called, stereotyping 12-year-olds, um, especially in games, for being immature, you know, cursing a lot. Like, I never personally used voice chat as a kid uh, when I was younger, but if I did, I certainly wouldn't have been swearing as much as the stereotypes say. And I actually probably wouldn't have sweared at all. Or when you're on like a political thread and someone says something and then you say something that might actually be valid, it might not be, and they just dismiss it as, oh, 
you're, you're, I checked out your profile and you're only 14 or you're only 12 or whatever, so you can't possibly know this. Just get off the thread or whatever. I see a lot of that, a lot more than I wish I did. And it really bothers me. And I'm trying to figure out a way to stop that. But a lot of people don't really want to listen. Like, that's you can try and explain to them. Oh, sorry, were you saying something? Oh, that's that's honestly why on a lot of these things, like Reddit and um, that other site that I said about Imgur, I keep my age anonymous. And I don't use my actual name or anything like that. And I keep my age completely anonymous. That's a that's a that's actually a really good way to like do that is it can also be kind of like an experiment, like a social experiment where you have a conversation with someone and you don't tell them your age or have your age known and then you reveal your age and they're like, Oh, look at that. Yeah, I definitely when I was younger, I think um I definitely like chose a random year and just like said I was this age because I dealt with that a lot online and I think um, there definitely is a lot of adultism online but with anonymity it allows you to either not specify or lie about your age and then be able to have a decent conversation and it does sort of pull back the current with that of like you can the the difference between someone's uh, ability to have a conversation does not depend on their age, and it's easier to see that when you don't see the person behind it. I think the biggest example I've had recently was there was a bunch of people talking about how they wanted to basically kill everyone who supported a certain candidate. I'm not going to use names because that would bring on a whole different thing, but they basically wanted to kill and hurt people who were of a who of a different mindset. And I w got on the thread and I was like, that's not, there's a lot of ways you can solve problems like this without needless violence, because there's a lot of people who are just misinformed. And that that really bothered me, so I got on and I said that. And people were like, oh, you're going to learn this soon, but the world isn't all sunshine and rainbows, and you can't just solve it with hugs. And then I was like, I never said that. I said there's other ways to handle situations without using violence. And I never got a response from that because people don't want to talk to someone who's younger than them about really anything. Yeah, um, I think, I think, um, though it's sort of like, it's, this isn't true for everyone, and I, if I said it was, this would be with, uh, another form of uh, the opposite of adultism, which would, um, ageism, like, I think? Yeah, well, um, what I'm going to say is, I think when, as you get older, the more cynical you become, and that's not true for everyone, but that is just a thing that can happen when you are, uh, quote unquote world weary. Um, and I definitely think that people uh, see kids as, as at, or, pe or anyone who's younger as having different ideas that maybe don't involve killing an entire people who have a different viewpoint than you as a sunshine and rainbows when really it's just finding different avenues or like better options, which I think is a extremely idiotic idea and I think people need to think about that a lot. And the even the possibility of a crazy idea that will result in a better or nonviolent solution, at, even the possibility of that should be explored. And if you're not exploring that, then you are either like bloodthirsty or like don't trust your, it's, an, it's an irrational is the problem. It's very irrational and it doesn't, solve anything by just excluding other ideas. It's bad brainstorming. Agreed. Um, honestly, I've become quite cynical of my generation in a bit. I, I mean, of people my age. Um, because a lot of the time, if you meet people in a park or something, they are often very unfriendly, or at least in the UK, 
that's the case. I have that problem in my neighborhood, too. All the kids don't want to talk to me. When I did used to talk to the kids in my neighborhood, they would talk down to me for not going to school or any of that. Same exact thing happened to me. Um, honestly, a lot of it happens. <laughs> um, I had a, actually quite a recent encounter with these kids <laughs> where basically I was wearing an outfit which which stood out quite a lot and basically they basically just mocked it so that's happened quite a few times mm, me um, too and honestly what happens quite a lot of the time is I think it's like territorial or something like that in a way like they're trying to grow up and they're trying to be cool and be accepted in society and they're not quite sure how to do that yeah Are you trying to say something? yeah I was just saying that I, 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 I very much agree with that I think that um, I think it kind of like trickles down where adults will tell children that if they're being they're misbehaving or just being weird in any way that they're they're bad and they should stop and then children kind of internalize that and feel bad about themselves and then push that out on other kids or younger kids and it's kind of a perpetual cycle of the only way I can make myself feel better is by now I'm not the stupid kid anymore I'm the adult telling another kid how stupid they are so I'm not the problem they're the problem when really, if you just kind of, like, accept that, like, whatever, I mean, like, I've got rainbow hair on right now. I've gotten a lot of comments. Actually, most of the comments about this specific haircut has been really great, and I like that. But I've definitely gotten comments before about my hair or about an outfit, and, like, from people my age or people older, or even people younger than me, who are just like, that's stupid. And I'm like, it's like, but I enjoy it. And I, it's, it's sad to see kids so young already and in kind of internalizing that like shame and how you you should like project a normality on other people yeah honestly as a kid one of one of the things that um what, that i did was honestly i unconsciously sort of did the opposite of normal things like I'm not even sure what I did anymore, but basically anything that was normal, I sort of, I did the inoffensive sort of opposite of that. And also I have a quote, which is from the, um, the um, Wikipedia entry of ad adultism. I have a quote from that, which, is, which says, I'll read it to you now. We are all creative, but by the time we are three or four years old, someone has knocked the creator creativity out of us some people shut up the kids who start to tell stories kids dance in their cribs but some of them will sit, insist they sit still by the time the creative people are 10 or 12 they want to be like everyone else yeah it's it's weird because a lot of it, you don't always really think about it but a lot of kids being mean to other kids and bullying and all that stuff comes from the adult interaction with children they think they got scolded once for doing this thing and we're told that this isn't the right thing to do and you need to do it differently and you have to be normal so anytime they see someone else doing that like wearing an outfit that isn't considered normal or i've had long hair since i was seven years old and i cannot tell you how many times i have had just people who won't get over it like you need to get a haircut what are you like you're not a girl you can't have long hair like and it's just it's so frustrating because you want to be mad at them but at the same time it's not really their fault they can't control what they've been told their whole life they've been told that this is what you have to do this is what's normal and if you don't do it that's bad so there's a, an underlying problem that doesn't always get fixated on um honestly 
as you can see, I have quite long hair, too. It used to be a lot longer, all the way down to my back. Same. Down here. Um, but, honestly, I think that um, the kids who are trying to, let's just say, normalize other kids are sort of in some way trying to protect them. So, yeah. Like, oh, I can't remember what I was going to say now, but that's basically half of what I was going to say. The other half, I'll remember, and if I do remember it, I'll say it. I think it's really sad because I see a lot, especially like in theater fields of uh, adults paying a lot of money to kind of get back that childhood innocence and unafraidness to express themselves. Like I do improv comedy, and when I take like cla like level one classes of just people like trying it out, there's some people who like actually want to do it, and there's other people who just kind of want to like get their confidence and their creativity and their kind of free spiritedness back. And it's kind of like we have these kids that grow up and we constantly beat into them to normalize and don't be creative and don't be free. And then when they grow up, we're like, okay, you can pay for these classes and try and get that back. And they realize how terrible this was and they try to get it back, but they're like, it's a lot of energy just to kind of get back what you had at the beginning. Um, like, I think it sucks that that happens. Yeah, it's basically like beating into you this certain way of thinking. And when you have a moment to think, oh, that's, that's not right, and they charge you money to get back the way you want to be. And I think a lot of people can also just, just kind of ignore it or the best you can. Just, you don't have to do what everyone thinks is right. Now, obviously, if you're in a situation where you're going to get harmed for not, that's, a, that's an even bigger problem. But if you're just doing it to be cool or normal or you're worried you might get bullied, don't, don't do that. that it's not, it's not going to fix anything. Yeah, it's, it's going to come like long-term mental effects on you. And um, if, does anyone uh, have an experience with the phrase, uh, it, it's just a phase? Like, uh, like, oh, you think that now, but oh, it's similar to uh, you'll think differently when you're older. But I think uh, there's a lot of, there's a very big cultural idea of teens going through phases. And I mean, fair, your teenage years and your early 20s is the time where you kind of figure things out, so you do go through a lot of things. But I think that term is less used to uh, talk about things that people are trying out and more kind of delegitimize things that people actually feel. Um, I see this a lot in like trans communities where people are, or, or um, LGBT in general, where like they're not gay, they're just trying something out. Um, but I think that's true in a lot of different cases of just people using the word it's just a phase to kind of delegitimize a person's expression. Honestly, um, I've sort of had a dream of being a computer programmer. And like a lot of my family has said it's like just a phase, something like that, something like that, something like that. And it's been quite disheartening, to be honest. When I was six, I wanted to grow my hair out, and I had a lot of people saying, oh, it's just a phase. Look at me now. That was like, that was a long time ago, and I haven't had short hair since. And the same thing, like five years ago, I got into music, and people were like, oh, it's just a phase. Still playing music all the time. It's not just a phase. I don't understand why people feel the need to do that. Yeah, and I think I think it just comes back to the fact that like adults think they know better when um, they don't necessarily like. I th it comes back to the knowledge aspect of. I think there's a lot of different things you can be very knowledgeable about, and it's impossible to be knowledgeable about everything. But adults kind of just pretend they know more about everything. 
Um, uh, Liz, do you have an experience of like having adults not know as much as you, but like, pretending that they do, and just kind of feeling demoralized? Yeah, it's a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, where do I even start? Um, I mean, I don't know. I have to think about it. I'll get back to you on that. I'm uh, what about you, Will? You seem like a very knowledgeable person. And didn't hear oh, what was said. Just uh, what, what do you think about, like, times where you are more knowledgeable than adults but uh oh don't oh i have plenty of experience about that <laughs> talk about a time where they kind of demoralize you just because you're younger even though you know more honestly when i went through the phase of liking the um fallout series of um games i well i learned a lot of science like about radiation and about history like 1950s history and crap and stuff like that um and Basically, when I tried to tell people about it, and I, I had been very knowledgeable about the subject, like, I had studied a lot of stuff about radiation and stuff like that, they said, how would you know that you're a kid and you most likely watch some scammy video online about it? Or a that Mythbusters kind of episode or something. Pardon? Or a Mythbusters episode or something. Uh, yeah. But honestly, I had read it in books and lots of stuff like that. And I also, just a quick something I want to say. There's, like, there's a huge bias that's, like, books are better than the internet. Books can be wrong, too. Yeah, and I want to talk on that because not just the internet, but you, uh, Maren, you said a Mythbusters episode. Like, why why would a Mythbusters episode be a worse way of knowing knowing something than of uh, reading a book? Like, I think that that is uh, true, where people kind of select uh, not just ways of find getting information, but also types of information. Like, I, I am very knowledgeable about, like, improv and about contra dancing, and I could talk to you endlessly about those subjects, or about film structure and, like, theories about um, themes in TV shows. But most people will look at those topics and say, yeah, yeah but that's not real knowledge and that's not important. But, like, knowing history is more important than that. And, but also, you have to know history, but you also have to know history from books. And also, you have to know history from books, but if you're a child, I'm still going to ignore you. And you've got to, like, follow through their hoops instead of just saying, this is what I know, I'm very good at what I know, and just because I'm a child doesn't affect that at all. Or um, you need a teacher in order to learn something. You can't possibly know anything unless you've paid money for a teacher to teach you something. That one I get all the time because I went through a, through like a little thing where I was obsessed with sharks like three years ago, and I watched like five documentaries and I read like five books and I spent hours on the internet researching various types of sharks and I had tried to have a conversation with someone who's a marine biologist, and they basically just told me, oh, no, you can't possibly know that. Yeah, um, I think... Um, uh, man, I totally lost my place. Will, do you have something to say about this? Um, honestly... Um, yeah, I, I I get that a lot too, Martin. Like, I get really interested in stuff. Like, one time, it's mostly video game stuff, like the City of Rapture or um, Libertarianism and stuff like that. But, and basically, I tell them about stuff. I do ca 
I did calculations to like calculate the weight of like um calculate the weight of um the the pressure under two thousand meters of the sea uh, two thousand meters under the sea and stuff because I was interested and in what it would take to build an underwater city and I keep me mentioning my family, but they basically said you can't know that because you're a kid. You can't know the the basic logistics of an underwater city because you're a kid. Stuff like that. Yeah, and, and to talk about what you said, Martin, about a teacher, um, especially with knowledge, like I can understand maybe uh, like learning an instrument might be easier with a physical person there because like it's hard to research all that kind of stuff and it's easier to sh for someone to show you. Not just saying that you can't learn an instrument by yourself or any like practical skill, but at least with that I can understand why someone might think that. But with knowledge and the internet, I don't understand why people think that there's any barrier between like learning really anything you want and why uh, a teacher who can be as flawed as the internet and but probably more so is a better source of inf like just information than uh, than just being on the computer by yourself for a while. I have two really good examples of the kind of you can't possibly know this if you didn't if you're not older. The first one is my sister is probably one of the most knowledgeable people you can go to if you want to know a lot about dolls. She absolutely loves dolls, everything from like dolls you get in a store to dolls that look exactly like an actual child. And we went to a flea market once and she walked up to the counter and she pointed at that and uh, she pointed at that and the person could tell she was looking at that. And the person was like, oh, you don't want that. That's really old. It's for collectors. And she was like, I know it's a... I don't remember what the name of the doll was, but she said the name of the doll and what year it was made and where it was from and how many how many were made and all that stuff. And the person was like, I didn't even know some of that. And I was standing right there and I was like, huh. And what really threw me off guard was the person very easily admitted to not knowing that. And then they had a conversation about dolls and I just wish that's what more people were like. Like, even if they came in with the notion of, oh, this person doesn't know anything because they're younger, they immediately changed their perspective on the situation and had the conversation like it was with someone they were originally considering to be more knowledgeable on it. Yeah, at my work we have this like um, virtual reality roller coaster that kids can ride, um, and it's very finicky. And most of the time when it stops working and I don't know how to figure it out, I go to the owner's son who's like 12 years old because he knows way more about technology and he usually has a way of fixing it. And like, um, it's it's all about like what you're interested in. He he is way better at understanding code like he he knows code and i have i don't know and i like can list maybe three types of code but i don't can't read any of it and i think i think that's a great example of just the fact that sometimes people younger than you have the answer and if you just turn to them you'll find something i feel like we just kind of need to remove like the idea of age stereotypes in general because I feel like there's not going to be there's obviously going to be there are more people older that know more about certain subjects and there's going to be more people who are younger who know more about certain subjects but if we just kind of remove like pretend we don't understand ages and that's not a thing the world is a lot simpler and there's a lot more happiness because no one cares whether or not there's they're 40 or they're 10 or they're 80 or they're two like that 
if we just can figure out a way to get past ages and just see them as a way to keep track of how long you've been alive and not of what you should be like and what people other ages should be like and what you can't be like or what you can't have interests in. If we can figure out how to get past all that, the world would be happier. I thought of two more like general examples of how age is, uh, adultism kind of affects children. But I'm actually more curious. Uh, I want to hear from uh, Will and Liz. What do you guys think of solutions to this? What do you what do you think like going forward would be the best way to like fix this? And I think um, with all uh, so many other marginalized groups that are still being affected by stereotypes and um, like ideas and perceptions of them, I think it would be really hard to completely banish it um, forever. But like, what do you guys think would be ways of getting on that road or at least making it better? Um, honestly, well, this has been something my mummy has said to me a lot, a lot, and I sort of drilled into my brain, but basically don't like force it upon them, just shine, like show your knowledge, don't brag about it, just naturally show it in a way, I guess, just show it naturally. Will, Will couldn't have said it better. I can't reword that any better. Yeah, and I think another aspect of ageism is the fact that uh, it kind of puts down people being silly who are maybe older. Like, like maturity is based on how serious you are, and if you are older and sillier then you you should like quote unquote act your age and you are not um, being proper and I think it's a, another way of kind of just um, using discrimination to p p push down people who just want to like act how they want to act and also the idea that maturity and seriousness are completely interlinked is something I disagree with. My grandmother actually got in the, into an argument with a store clerk because she wanted to like buy me a beanie baby as a present and the clerk like she was like oh yeah I'm gonna grab buy this for my 14 year old grandson and the person was basically like oh don't buy this for them they're not gonna like it I have a 14 year old brother and don't buy this for him it's he'll hate it and she was like well you don't know my grandson. How would how would you know that? And the person was basically like, because I know what 14-year-old boys are like, and they're not going to like Beanie Babies. And I like Beanie Babies. I collect them. So the, the person basically was convincing her not to buy it. In the end, she just didn't buy it because she didn't want to get into the argument with them. But she told me that story, and I thought, hey, that'd be great to talk about. Yeah, I think there's also a idea of <clears throat> protecting children from cer certain topics, and I, I definitely, I mean, my philosophy is I would never, like, push a topic that could possibly be, um, I don't want to use the word more adult, but I can't think of a better word for it, but I, I would never want to push um, a topic that is, is quote, more adult or more mature, I would say, <clears throat> on someone without um, without them wanting me to, but I definitely experienced as a kid, and I see <clears throat> I see this happening now, of just kids being like, younger people being like, no, no, I want to have this conversation, and people be like, no, no, you're just a kid, you shouldn't be talking about this. Like, um, politics is a great example, um, uh, anything to do with like sex or drugs, um, anything to do with um, like anything grotesque happening in the country or, or world wars or any like of the seriously like like terrible things that happened in those wars and not just general people who are fighting any of the real serious parts of that. Like kids shouldn't be talking about these things and like 
or like like horror movies like there's a certain age where a kid can see a horror movie but there's certain ages where they, you can't and it should be more like I, I think the best way is to talk to people and be like oh hey do you feel comfortable with this and if they say yes then like have the conversation and if they ever don't you can stop the conversation but I think um, there's a lot in of the world of just stopping any kind of conversation because of someone's age. So uh, that was dead silence for a second. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to talk about? Or do we want to just go to the break video? Um, honestly, what um, you said about horror movies and stuff, like, I play a lot of games that are above my age, like, let's say, Skyrim and Fallout. And, <laughs> you know, I know all the nitty-gritty stuff about those games. Like, looking at the surface... It would seem like those games are just almost kid friendly, almost except for the heads exploding. <laughs> but when you actually get into the lore, it's a lot grittier. But I think, but how that um, actually goes into this conversation, which is probably what I should have started with, is I feel comfortable with that stuff. Like I'm okay with seeing a bit of gore and stuff. But I think it's just up to people's preferences, mostly, is what I think. Okay, so want to go to the break video? Okay, let's do it. Current drinking age laws, they drive drinking among young people into the dark. They make young people afraid to call for help if there are health problems with their friends. It's, it's disastrous. Prohibition didn't work before, and it's not working now. Hi, I'm Michelle Fields with Reason TV. We're here with Jeffrey Nadell, president of the National Youth Rights Association. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. What is the National Youth Rights Association? So the National Youth Rights Association is a youth-led civil rights group. And in fact, we're really the only youth-led civil rights group in the United States. And what we do is we, uh, we're committed to defending the, the civil rights of young people, educating society about the value of youth, and also, this is a key point, empowering young people to defend their own liberties, and that is really what we do. Can you talk a little bit about Kylie's Law and how sure. it discriminates against young people and fails to protect them? Sure. Now, Kylie's Law is a disastrous policy. It imposes uh, driving curfews on young people. It imposes passenger limits. It penalizes uh, young people for distracted driving while ignoring the same behavior from older people. And the key point with Kylie's Law is it requires anyone under 21 to place a red decal on their license plate, basically marking them to be followed by, by predators, and we've seen that happen. Um, even when parents are driving, driving their children's cars, they, people have started racing with them, people have come at them aggressively. Now, the studies actually show that when young people go through these graduated driver's license systems that impose these burdensome restrictions, they're actually less safe because they drive less and they don't get the real world experience they need and they wait longer to get their license. Your group supports lowering the voting age to 16. Why? Good question. Uh, one of the key points here is taxation without representation. Look, our founding fathers fought against this when, when it was imposed on them by Great Britain and we have the same problem today. Um, 16 and 17 year olds, young people today are paying 10 billion dollars a year in sales tax, a billion dollars in income tax. 80 percent of young people work before they graduate high school and yet they're denied the right to vote, right? We have a $14.3 trillion national debt that's causing a, an entire crisis as we speak, and it's this generation that is gonna have to bear the burden of that debt, yet we have no voice in our future today. What do you think the, dr the age limit for drinking should be? Now this is a very good question. What we're working to do at this point is to lower the drinking age to 18. We see it as an absolute travesty that you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds are going overseas fighting our wars, dying in those wars, 
Um, and you know, the, the, the soldiers who come back are actually sometimes being arrested for underage drinking. Current drinking age laws, they drive drinking among young people into the dark. They make young people afraid to call for help if there are health problems with their friends. It's, it's disastrous. Prohibition didn't work before and it's not working now. What is your group's view on age of consent? That's also a very good question. Our organization does not take a position on that. It's a very contentious issue and we certainly hear all sides of it, but that's not something that, that we address. We have our, our plate full at this point with a lot of other stuff. What about parents' rights? Um, if a guardian or parent is supporting youth financially, uh, should they have a say over what the kid can do? What we see a lot of times with these policies that that governments are implementing is that they don't only infringe upon fundamental youth rights but they really infringe upon parents rights and the rights of families to 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 raise their children to decide how how their children will grow up um, you know curfews are, are a great example of this because the government steps in and decides in a heavy-handed manner that young people can't be outside after a certain hour can't be outside after 10 p.m. and if they are they'll be arrested and they'll they'll have you know a, a misdemeanor on their record Instead, let's, let's leave this decision to parents, to families, where there can be open dialogue founded upon mutual respect and where young people and parents can come to decisions about what is right for you, what is right for us as a family. Because these one-size-fits-all solutions, they don't work and they often have disastrous effects. Thank you for joining us, Jeffrey. It was great talking with you. I'm Michelle Fields with Reason TV. Thank you. Uh, so guys, just so you know, Liz had to leave um, early, so it'll just be us three right now. Um, but uh, as in the video, it talked a little bit about uh, the legality of age. And uh, I recently am going through getting my driver's license. And in the state of New Jersey, uh, you basically, after you get your written test, it's six months, and then you can take your driving test, and then you've got a year of probationary driving where you can only have one other person that you don't aren't related to and uh, in the car or and you can't drive after 11 p.m. and before 6 uh, a.m. and uh, but all so all of those are restrictions that you have to have for a year unless you're 21 so um, my probationary license ends in like June or July but my birthday, I'll be 21 in end of March. So it'll be times where like, I just don't, I have a probationary license, but I don't have these restrictions. And I find it interesting, like what about me in like two months means I can, I should not be out at 12 a.m. drive, 12 p.m. driving versus me now or me when I'm 16. Like what is the difference between us? And my father actually had uh Something to say about this where people would be worried that uh, young people would like run away with their car basically like you could run away way easier driving a car um, he didn't necessarily th said he agreed with this but he said that's probably what people are thinking and I find that interesting that people are like oh children are gonna run away if we don't stop them from driving after 11 um, so what do you guys think about that about sort of the driving laws um, to be completely blunt, that driving law, it sounds idiotic. Um, honestly, if you're old enough to drive at all, I see no reason why there should be a time restriction on that. Uh, I don't really see a reason why there could be a time restriction on that. I mean, that seems ridiculous. But I don't know. I kind of, I kind of agree with it. I guess a little, not the time restriction, but the law surrounding when you should be able to t drive. But at the same time, I don't. So I'm probably not the best person to talk about it. I mean, I understand why the time restriction be, uh, in general, just because like if you're driving at three o'clock in the morning, maybe you're a bit tired and it's it's dark out. I um, my biggest problem with it is the fact that it's if you're over 21 it doesn't affect you anymore um maybe because you need you more likely have work that you need to be driving to um but just the fact that it stops at that age 
Um, and another factor is we talked about uh, restrictions in movies, but you were saying you play video games earlier and uh, like you have to be a certain age to play M rated games. And um, I, that's another factor of just age being a general restriction because we don't have a better way of figuring it out, but it's, it is another form of adultism. Um, as you were saying about the video game thing I said, um, there is a site called Common Sense Media, which is one of the best sites I've ever used. Basically, kids and adults give their opinions on what the um, game's rating should be. So, like, they say, and then it's all tallied up, and then it says, kids say the game should be rated this, and adults say the game should be rated this. But one thing that is is easily felt in common sense media is, and even from my um, mother, is that when she's look reading the kid reviews, she doesn't seem to take it into account. Um, and you also talked about about how you're from UK earlier, and. Um, Martin, you live in New Hampshire, and uh, I've I spent some time in Australia, and I spent some time around children, and I think, uh, what do you two think about the way children are treated differently in other countries? I definitely think uh, that children seem to be treated a little bit better uh, in Australia than in America, but I didn't have a lot of time to really like think on it, so I don't know how much I could say personally, but I'm very curious about that. Uh. I think it varies between different countries. I'm not very knowledgeable on the subject, so I wouldn't really know. But I guess I guess it interests me that there's so much difference in how we treat people in general in various countries. When I was young, I used to travel a lot around pretty much everywhere, and Honestly, I didn't know just much of a difference, but then again, I was young, so I probably didn't, I wouldn't have noticed anyway if there was a difference, which I don't know there was, but there might have been. Anyway, I'm going on. But basically, like, when I said something, if it was, if it was interesting or, um, or funny or something like that, it, it was either ignored or it was, um, it was, I was, I, t to them I seemed really cute <laughs> or something like that. How does everyone feel about kids on leashes? It makes me very angry. Agreed. Yeah, I think it, it kind of, it's, it perpetuates that children are just animals that have somehow learned the ability to talk thing, which it is de really it, messed up in my opinion. It dehumanizes them. Yeah, it, it definitely dehumanizes them. And like, I think I, I, I've heard about, I've never seen it personally in life, but I've heard about um, restaurants giving discounts for well-behaved children. And that idea definitely makes me think of like, that seems like, a thing you would do about pets. That seems like, oh, you can bring a pet as long as it's well behaved. And it's like, I mean, as I, I was, when I was a kid, I was not well behaved at a restaurant. I got bored very easily before the food came. But just the idea that like, like money incentivizes like well behaved children. Like as an adult, if I'm around a bunch of friends and we're in a restaurant and maybe we're, we go there after work, like, like we sometimes have diner runs after work and we get pretty rowdy and um, I think we're, we can get like worse than most kids I've seen. So I think it's dumb that the idea is like, oh, children are the rowdy ones when I've definitely seen and been an adult that's way worse than most kids. When I was, uh, I think I was eight, I went to one of those restaurants with the help. They didn't give you like discounts. They gave you presents. Like, I got a kaleidoscope for being well-behaved. At the time, I was like, I was never, like, the kind of 
kid that was rowdy or anything like that in restaurants. I was just like, I would sit, I would talk to whoever I was eating with, and I would eat, and then I would leave. And then I was leaving, they handed me a kaleidoscope for being good. And I was like, oh, well, sweet, I got a toy. And then, like, I reflected on that later, because when you're seven, you you get a toy, that's cool. But I reflected on that later, like, that's really messed up. Like, that's like giving a dog a bone if they sit. Honestly, to me, and I know I'm going to sound like a bit of a conspiracy nut, but it sounds like mental conditioning to, like, train people into being good workers and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with conspiracies. Uh... Um, yeah, I think I think it is uh, kind of a Pavlovian response. Like I can uh, gift a child a thing, and they'll like associate it with acting good, and then they'll always act good. And I I think it's similar to um, like Santa Claus or like the Boogeyman, or like there's a lot of stories talking about. Um, like, if you are not good, you will not get presents at Christmas. If you are not good, this will happen. And people are kind of just, like, afraid to just sit down and have a full conversation about, hey, you should do this, and here's the logic why. But also, it's your choice whether you want to do it. I'm just giving you my opinion and letting a child um, make a decision. And frankly, children will probably, a lot of the time, make a poor decision, but they are learning, and, but that's how you learn, and as adults, people just grow up expecting a Pavlovian response, and then they don't get that, and that's how we get people who don't really understand empathy, and kind of act crazy, because they don't actually have empathy, they've just been taught it, and then they don't internalize it, and I think that's a lot of problem, where it's just, is we want the easy way of teaching children, so we don't actively work to make them good. We just, like, make them good right now. And I think when some children realize that, that's what maybe causes, like, the rebellious phase, you know, trying to... um get away from that, I guess, in a sense, Machiavellian scheme of manipulation. Yeah, like, if you realize, or even you might not even realize, you're just angry because you feel like everything you do is wrong and you're being told the exact way you need to do things, that's when you get, like, what everyone says, like, all oh, teenagers are rebellious and stuff like that. That's how that happens, is because you're trying to control them, and then they get to an age where they don't, they kind of realize that that's happening, and they think that they're like, oh yeah, well now I can do something about it, and that's how that happens. Yeah, like if you hold a cat, or if you hold a bar of soap, or something like that, and then you squeeze it to try and control it, it's gonna like go, where? Um, yeah. That was like the greatest example, not example, that was, that was just great. Oh my god, that, that was amazing. Analogy, I think, is the word. Um, yeah, that's what I thought it was, but I didn't want to say it and then be wrong. Another yeah. point that, um, well, I've kind of thought about this for a while, and this is going to sound like another conspiracy theory, but um, it's kind of a theory which I, I haven't really come up with a name with it, and right now I'm just calling it a, v a very malevolent and insidious name called the infection. <laughs> um, but basically it says that, let's say you have a kid. And let's say um, he, let's say he's not the nicest kid. He's kind of a bit rebellious. He doesn't really, um, he's not nice. And he's trying to be cool and, you know, swear a lot and basically do all that kind of stuff. 
Um, I think when, and let's say that kid like plays a game, let's just say like Grand Theft Auto, and then decides to act like those characters in a way, not in the violent, crazy stuff like that, but in like the sort of racism and stuff like that. And then he goes to this, let's say, new school, which is, let's say, I keep saying, let's say, but let's just say this school has been magically protected from kids like this. It's like a one out of a hundred school. And the, this, keep in mind, this is just a theory. But let's say he spreads that, he meets new friends, he spreads that to his friends, then they spread that to their friends, and then it's suddenly throughout the school. It's acting like a virus in a way, multiplying. And there are some kids who are immune to this and just kids who don't like that or who are most likely societal outcasts and unpopular. But stuff like that, like, it just spreads through trying to be cool. I think the problem with that theory would be the fact that in that school, that behavior is not cool. If there's if there's a school that's a hundred percent been uh, protected by like that kind of behavior, then if that behavior came in, like if like if in in a lot of like my social groups, like we we haven't been protected, but we've like learned that that behavior is like not okay. If someone came into our friend group and started acting that way we wouldn't be like oh man this person's so cool i want to be like them we would just be like hey can you not do that and probably ostracize them if they didn't stop so i think if it wasn't in, in a perfect world where that idea was never in it um i don't think it would it would survive for long I and think. um Go ahead. My, my counterpoint to that would be um the example in the school is a school that's never touched on the subject or so it's a completely kind of new thing to that to them to these kids so they they see this new maybe older kid come in and he's using all this stuff and being rude and stuff like that and they think that's how older kids act and they think that's cool that's what i would that's my counterpoint to your point well i think i think it would it would depend on a good foundation i think uh it uh, like it all starts at home and like for me being unschooled i i had a lot of that uh where of reinforcement from my parents i think a great example of this was um i always call my parents linda and andy i don't call them mom and dad it was just when i was a kid i saw them calling each other linda and annie it was like okay that's their names um, and I have a lot of friends, even in the uh, unschooling community sometimes, that are just like baffled by this and can't understand it, even after I've explained it and done it in front of them many times. And I find it really weird, mostly because the fact is that if they're my mom and if they're mom and dad, they're not people to me. Like if you if you are friend or coworker or like brother, like. Like, I, I feel like my parents, I personally feel like my parents are more than just my parents, and they are their own person, and I reflect that by calling them by their name. But beyond that, uh, when I was younger, I was in a Toys R Us buying a toy, and I think I, I called my mom Linda, and uh, the store owner said, no, no, that's that's your mom. It's like, no, I call her Linda. It's like, no, no, you, you, you call your mom mom. And... Uh, I, we didn't do it at the time, but I, I was talking to her about how, like, we should have been like, oh, okay, co-worker or, like, Toys R Us employee. Like, imagine if we did that for everyone, if we just called, like, people by their title, like, called everyone friend. I mean, we sometimes guess, like, we do call people friend, but we also use their particular name. Um, so I think I think it it's a, a thing of, like, uh, where a child just grows up and, like, sees the problem with this uh, thing in society and acts against it, but the society kind of pushes back against it. I think kids, because they didn't live in society for a very long time, they can kind of have ideas of like, hey, like maybe this tradition is not good anymore because I'm, I, I'm definitely opposed to tradition 
when it's not needed. Um, and I think kids can be very helpful in breaking that, but then they'll just be pushed down and conditioned if they don't have good support, which is why I'm a big purveyor of like very awesome parenting, which I am blessed to have. I think I have good parenting too, but then again, we're probably all biased. Um, but yeah, I agree with most of what you say, though I do like to call my mummy mummy. <laughs> It's just something I like to do. Same. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to say everyone. Everyone should do it. I just, yeah. It's like I. I don't. I don't go up to people and say, "Oh, you call your mom mom." That's so weird. Even though I've gotten that comment a lot. It's or most people think it's like, "Do you not like your parents?" Because that's that's the idea. Is like, um, like. In, in movies, I see a lot of times uh, children calling their step uh, dads like the, by their name, and that's like movie shorthand for "I don't love you," which like just kind of like hits me personally. Like that's not how I feel. Kind of make irks me a bit. I think it's different for everyone. I I try my best not to question anything anyone else does, as long as it's not like physically hurting me or they're forcing their beliefs on me, I'm fine with everyone else's beliefs as well. But I think it's also good to question your own beliefs because like like that's what I think uh, it was what I was talking about, children is they're they're very new to all these things. So like they don't have that time to be like, oh this is how things are this is just how it is so they can have that time to be like okay maybe this doesn't make any sense and we should change it not specifically in the example of we should all start calling our parents by their first names but in the sense of like um i can't think of a specific example right now but just the fact of uh all the time children are saying like i i think uh children are more inclined to be uh, more supportive minorities of all kinds and uh, adults are like pushing back against them like no maybe we, we, we are born recently and see the problem with all this and are saying no let's actually stop this instead of being like yeah that's a problem over there oh well that's how things are yeah because we don't have an inherent bias and um, and sort of um blind following to tradition. I feel like if all kids were given the freedom that we're given, we could just collectively solve a lot of the world's problems. Like, it, would, it wouldn't be easy. I agree. Easy. Like, it wouldn't be easy, because problem, world problems, most of the time, they're problems still for a reason. But if all people, when they're young, were given their ability to think for themselves and do and learn and do things they think are right, then there would be a lot of problems that just wouldn't be a thing anymore. Yeah, I think um, I think I remember seeing like a Tumblr post about how like I wish all these homophobic old people would just die already. And so everyone else would be fine, and and I I think that post is sadly a little misinformed on the fact that those old people uh, condition younger people to be homophobic. So that doesn't it, instead of taking like one generation and we're good now, it is slowly weeding out all the people, and then we get pushback. And I think this is true for any type of. Um, uh, minority where it's just like they push against it and it like lingers and it gets harder and harder because of that effect and I think it's also true with abuse I think I think abuse um, not, not only like uh, children bullying or making fun of other children but parents bullying their child and then the child growing up and being like well that's how I was treated I must treat my children like that and instead of it just being gone in one generation because of one person was uh, 
not right in the head. It continues on cycle after cycle. Yeah, I agree with that. But I feel like I want all you v viewers out there to really think about how you can make a change in your circle of friends or in your community to just try and and not really like force everyone like, oh, you can't do this. Like just kind of show them by how you do it, like what is a better solution for various problems. Like that's the best you can really do without having people attack you. Yeah, um, yeah, as sort of a call to action, I would agree with that. I think um, people, um, even the other day, um, I was with someone who um, I think was cursing, and um, I even made a joke about, like, watch it in front of the 15-year-old, like, watch, there's, like, children around or something, and there was a person 15, and they didn't realize that, and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, and I really... Like looking back, I really should have stopped it and be like, I mean, and they were like, no, 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 I don't, I don't care, I don't care, and I'm like, like yeah, that's fair, like they're fine with it. So why is this a problem for me or for this person who was cursing if they are fine with it and they like clearly probably have it have cursed before? Or I think that's true for anything. So I would ask people to yeah, like of course be cautious about putting new. Um, material to children that maybe they are not ready for but like use caution but also maybe like children are looking for more stimuli so um, don't be afraid to give some to them and especially the fact that if they have already had stimuli the same of in effect of if they already curse if they watch horror movies all the time um, then it is okay to talk about a really grotesque thing and ask like like any person, ask them first and say, hey, is this okay if we have this conversation about a really, like, gross, violent horror movie? And if they're okay with that, then then continue. It's, it's up to the child what they're okay with, and you shouldn't force what you think is okay for children onto them. And, of course, with all that, like, caution and legality and stuff. But... Um, yeah. Be aware honestly, of uh, honestly, um, a lot of people, they sometimes accidentally swear in front of me, and whenever, um, they realize that and they, like, apologize, I'm like, it's absolutely, it's absolutely fine. Personally, I don't, I don't swear in public or it with any kind of company unless it's close friends. Because, like, even with my mother, like, I don't, I always say, pardon my French, or something like that. But when I'm on my own, it's like, another death in Dark Souls? This is my 58th try. Ah! <laughs> Insert profanities here. <laughs> um, but when I'm, like, with my cousins and stuff, I... I don't know what they or their parents like prefer, so I normally, I well, I always keep, I always maybe like at most say a crap, but that's pretty much it. I I believe that if you give them the ability, the ability to like swear whenever they, if they don't, if you don't restrict it, they'll learn on their own when it's appropriate. Like, if you don't, it's the same thing with, like, candy. If you don't let your kids ever eat candy, when they get the ch chance to eat candy, they're going to eat, like, all of the candy they can possibly get and make themselves sick. It's the same kind of thing. Like, if you are not restricted to swear, then when, there's, when it's an inappropriate time to swear, you know it's not the right time. Yeah, and kind of, like, let your kids make those mistakes because I, I think people are very afraid of having their kids make mistakes even though, like, that's the time when they make them. 
when they also can't remember them that well and also have parents for support. Like if they're not going to make those mistakes now, they're going to make them later when it's more serious. Um, but on a different topic about uh, another thing that parents do to kids is like I, at my work, I work at a Ninja Warrior obstacle course where I, yeah, and there's a rock wall there and I see a lot of kids kind of like pushing their kids to go on the rock wall and like they're, they're basically like just have their hands out like this and the parents are just pushing them up and they are like like crying or they're whining and they're asking please like stop and they're like, they're like no 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 you you, you want to do this just just try it a little bit and i'm just standing there like they obviously don't want to do this why are you just like continuing to like push them to do the thing and i think i think it it, it legitimately inhibits people's desire to try new things because if you give them space their own space to be like okay, now I feel comfortable to try a new thing, they'll be more comfortable in the future to try new things versus if they have this association with a very terrible time where they tried a new thing, they won't be very happy with it. Um, honestly, black back to swearing for a second. Um, and, I, and I really like your point about how, um, you know, kids will sort of find their own way of when to use them. But basically, when... I was younger, I was literally, for no reason, like, I had never been told that swearing was bad or anything or stuff like that. I had only been lightly told that that was a swear word and stuff, and I had always stopped. But I was deathly afraid of swearing. Like, it would activate my, if I heard someone swear, it would activate my flight or fight response. I'm not even kidding. But basically, um, eventually it got to the point where, like, for some reason, I accidentally blurted out um, the F word. Um, and I literally had to, I was basically on the verge of tears saying, I said truck. I said truck. <laughs> and basically, my mother had to do this thing where she taught me how to swear and not be afraid of them. <laughs> if only my younger, if only my, if only my younger self could see me now. Yeah, I think that's, that's something that needs to be fixed as well, is that if you if you get it into your children's heads that something is very bad when it's not that bad, they're going to be terrified of it. And if it ever happens, they're going to not know how to handle it. And I think that's really, that's not, that's not, it's doing the opposite of what you're trying to do. And um, one thing I also do is um, like when I was at the park yesterday, I was just hanging out, you know, climbing this climby thing, whatever it was. Um, I heard these um, two other kids, like, just absolutely swearing their lungs off in this kid where you can see, like, four to three to two-year-olds are, like, just walking around in, in um, listening range. And basically anyone could hear them because they were talking very loudly. And I just said to them, you know, there are a lot of kids here. Try not to. I, I doubt their parents would like them hearing that. So, yeah. Basically, they just said, um, why do we care? And honestly, I think that's a bit irresponsible because, you know, maybe the kids might be with grandma when they say something like that or something like that. Yeah, as a kid, I was always, like, interested in doing things, quote-unquote, above my age. I, um, I worked on a movie set once for an independent film, and 
um, I just remember like a few of the uh, my coworkers like um, working, like talking about like um, more mature topics, and I was sitting around and kind of giving my two cents. Um, and not necessarily something I had a lot of experience in, but something I felt I could contribute to the conversation. And like one of the guys really brushed me off and said like, oh, you don't know anything because you're a kid. And I, I like, I acted, I, I reacted very aggressively because I was like, um, I was, it was pissed me off to be frank because like maybe it, Maybe my uh, my opinion, because I don't have as much experience with this, can be just as much as a valid one because I have sort of a quote unquote outsider's perspective, and ju just the the brushing off of any idea. Um, I mean, like knowledge in a subject is, is important, but um, depending on the thing, it is just good to have like outside ideas come in and talk about it and. Just sort of that whole the idea uh, sucks. When I was uh, four, I was shopping with my aunt, and I saw like this. I think it was like an Imaginex Bat Cave or whatever, and I saw it, and I was like, "Can I get that?" Because like I had birthday money or whatever, and she was like, "Oh no, that's right. That's like for ages three, like and under." And I was like. And she picked out, like, some card game or whatever. Maybe I was older. I think I may have been six, actually. And she picked out, like, some card game or a dinosaur or something that she deemed more, like, age-appropriate. And I didn't... I hated it then. I was very angry. But it wasn't until I was older that I realized how stupid that was. Like, if I'm interested in something and... I'm going to have fun playing with it or whatever. Just because it's for people younger than me doesn't mean that I can't have it. Yeah. Um, it. There's a lot of uh, parks near, near where I live in the city and they have a lot of playgrounds. And I think it like, um, I remember, I, I don't know ex the exact like age limit, but they have like hard age limits. and I think it was like 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 it's like tw if you're over 12 you can't be in this park and when I turned 13 I was like I'm a 13 year old who like still wants to play in a playground and I I, I think it's like it's the opposite where like you you can't enter some restaurants with as a child without accompanied by an adult but playgrounds you can't enter without being accompanied by a child and like if I ever want to go uh into a playground, I have to have a child with me, um, and I think that's, like, I think teenagers can want to be on playgrounds, hell, I still want to be, play on a playground, like, there's still fun things I can do on that, um, and, I mean, when I am, I should be wary of the other kids around me, which I guess is the reason for, uh, it, but that's, that's not, that's, I, I guess that's assuming I'm a type of person who would not be, just be watchful of other kids, which I guess those people are out there. So I understand why it's there, but it kind of sucks that uh, playgrounds have that. Yeah, um, there, there's a playground near my house who has that like age limit thing, and both me and my friend are over it. But we always go like in the morning time, so we just like play on it anyway. To be cl completely honest, I still want, you know those, like, ball climbing frame indoor places? Those are still really fun! <laughs> I know, right? I wish they were, like, all ages. I'm, honestly, I'm really glad the playground near me is for all ages, because, like, you can properly climb up it. Like, oh, sorry, did I, did that, was that really loud? Sorry. You can, like, climb up it and, you know, jump across and get to the highest point where you're not supposed to be. And that's really fun. And also, you can um, spin your cousins on the tire swing so fast that they fly off. Um, there's this uh, sort of indoor playground type place called Sky Zone, where it's a bunch of trampolines. 
Um, and it's really fun to play on. But one time when I went in there uh, with my brother, we weren't allowed to go in the dodgeball area because there was a bunch of kids there. And I was like, we literally had to uh, have our own dodgeball area. Well, at first, we weren't allowed to play dodgeball at all. But then they gave us our own special area to only play us two. And I was like, I want to play dodgeball with the little kids. Like, I like, I have two jobs, and all of them are, like, just at their base level are just hanging out and playing with little kids. And I think it's really fun. And it sucks that I can't do that because the place is like, no, you're going to throw balls too hard at them, and they're going to get injured, even though those balls are super soft. Um, so, yeah, that's another uh, factor of that. So, do we want to finish up? Yeah. On, um, honestly, I just want to quickly say something. <laughs> um, honestly, actually, what was I going to say? Sorry, I completely forgot. Okay, so I think I think we're good. This was an awesome discussion. I think we touched on a lot of great points. This has been Youth on Subjects of the World, and I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, I would just actually like to um, end on a quote from uh, Teresa Brett. Um, sort of, I think it encompasses a lot of what we're talking about today. And the quote is, uh, when we treat children as less important and inferior than adults, we train them to use domination and control over others. This becomes the foundation for oppression. I think that's very accurate. So, yeah. Um, I just want to say, <laughs> if there are any Imgurians watching, just... Uh... I'm the account at Tidbit there. Okay, thanks. <laughs> if we want to change the world, we must first change the media. Mainstream media exists for the purposes of indoctrination and manipulation of public perception. The world of free and independent media is growing. And with the upsurge in information now available in the public domain, it has never been easier to access free and independent media. The exploration of this information resulted in an experimental project which would provide a fully supported space for researchers, whistleblowers and seekers of all kinds to express themselves and educate the world. On the 1st of January 2015, Conscious Consumer Network was launched to the world. Nobody thought we would make it this far, but CCN is the longest running free and independent media network of its kind. CCN is a unique collaboration of hearts and souls, bringing you information from different perspectives to educate and inform. Since we started CCN, we have had only one desire, the pursuit of a free, fair, just, sustainable world, and this has not changed. Having overcome many challenges over the last two years, CCN is here to stay, and we've got great things lined up for 2017. Help keep CCN on the air by supporting the 2017 Network Support Fund.